Hi, first graders. Before we went on spring break, we had been learning about a lot of different kinds of animals and how animals can be classified or categorized. And we were working on learning about how some of those animals and even plants too have characteristics that can help them to survive. So we started by learning about plants. And remember that we did the garden in the glove where we grew different plants and we saw how they started as seeds and how they grew up. Then we started learning about reptiles and we learned about all the different kinds of reptiles that have scales on their body. And we learned about amphibians, which was mostly frogs and toads, some salamanders too. And then we learned about mammals. So there are a lot of different kinds of mammals. We learned that that was probably the biggest category of animals was the mammal category. After we were supposed to learn about mammals, this week we were supposed to be learning about insects or bugs. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about insects and bugs in this video, but we won't cover too much about that. I'm gonna share my screen with you again, and I wanna play um, a, PowerPoint that I made. One second. Okay, so this is a page that I made of plants. So plants have different types of characteristics that can help them survive. So one of the plants that came to my mind first was this cactus. And a cactus has a characteristic that helps it to survive. What do you think it has? What does the cactus have on it that helps it to survive? Right, all of those spikes and thorns, and that can help it from having animals maybe try to come and eat the plant or try to um, bite the plant and get some of the water inside. And it's kind of the same with other plants that have thorns, like maybe a rose plant has thorns on it. So same thing, it can help kind of protect the plant from another animal or another creature that might try to eat it. We talked a lot about how um, plants have roots. One characteristic of a root is that it helps the plant stay in place. So we talked about how the roots can kind of anchor that plant into the ground. When those roots are in the ground, it can help it from getting blown over in the wind. It helps it kind of stand up stronger. But the roots serve another purpose too. The roots are important because that is how the plant is gonna get water. So if it's raining and some water comes down over here, the roots are able to kind of reach farther apart to see if there's any water on all these other sides of the plant. So the stronger the roots get and the bigger that they grow, they can reach out and kind of collect water from different places. Another characteristic that plants have is leaves. And leaves is actually what collects all of the, the sunlight that helps the plants grow. So those leaves are a really important part of the plant too. Okay, moving on to reptiles. Reptiles have a one big, um, one big thing that reptiles have is their scales. But some of these reptiles that I picked here have different types of characteristics. The turtle, what do you think the turtle has that helps it survive? A shell, right. So the turtle's shell can help it to survive and help protect it from predators that might be trying to eat the turtle. So it can just kind of hide in its shell there and it stays protected. Over here I put a picture of a chameleon. What is a characteristic, a special characteristic about a chameleon that helps it survive? It can camouflage, it can change colors. So that chameleon can change colors and blend in with its surroundings to help protect itself from other predators. The snake, the snake has a really cool characteristic that helps it survive. And one thing that snakes have is they have kind of like night vision, where at nighttime they can see warm bodies, something called infrared, and they can see a body in the nighttime that shows them maybe there's a mouse or something to help them um, when they're hungry. They can find some food to eat. So they have this special night vision that snakes have. And then the last reptile that I chose here is an alligator. The alligator or the crocodile, they have their eyes are set up higher on top of their head. And that helps them because then they can kind of sneak through the water and their eyes are sitting up higher on their head here so they can see what they're doing, but most of their body can stay hidden in the water. So that's a characteristic that helps them to survive too, is their eyes are up higher on their head 
and they're able to stay hidden in the water. All right, amphibians. We learned about amphibians. Um, we learned a lot about frogs that week. One of the characteristics that an amphibian has is some types of frogs have these sticky toe pads. And with those sticky toe pads, they can climb things and they can hang on to things. And that helps them maybe get away from somebody if they needed to, or maybe it would help them climb up to something that they needed to eat or maybe something to drink, helps them get around with those sticky toe pads. Another characteristic that helps a frog survive is their long tongue. This long tongue that a frog has can help them to survive because it helps them catch food. They're able to catch bugs with their long sticky tongue, okay? Another characteristic of a frog is that they have really long back legs. And why do you think these back legs are helpful for frogs? Right, because it can help them jump. So with these long back legs, the frogs are able to jump away from a predator. If there was something that was chasing them or trying to get them, they'd be able to jump away. Um, they can use their big long legs to get around and jump around. All right, moving on to mammals. We learned about mammals. There are many different kinds of mammals, so I only picked a few. One of the mammals that I thought was a cool one was this snow leopard. And the snow leopard has many characteristics that help it to survive. One that you might notice is the color of its fur. This snow leopard has this fur that can help it camouflage in snowy places. So it kind of blends in with the snow and maybe the trees that are around them. They have this long tail. The tail helps the snow leopard to balance. Snow leopards have long claws and sharp teeth to help them catch prey. Let's talk about the giraffe. Why do you think that the giraffe has this big long neck? Why would that be helpful for a giraffe? To get leaves from the trees, right? So the giraffes are so much taller than other animals and they have these long necks that it helps them to get these leaves off of the tops of trees where other animals can't get there. So the giraffes have a characteristic of helping them to survive and it's their long neck. All right, an elephant. Elephants have a couple of characteristics here that help them survive, but what I was thinking is the trunk. The trunk is a very helpful characteristic to the elephant. You can see in this picture that the elephant is using its trunk to help feed itself. The elephant can use their trunk to pick things up, to pick up logs and move them out of their way. They can use their trunk to dig in the dirt. They can use their trunk for many different things. It's almost like they have a second or um, another arm where they can use their trunk to do a lot of different things, okay? Um, then the beaver. Beavers have really sharp beaver teeth. And the reason why they have those teeth and the reason why it helps them to survive is because that is how they build their dams to protect themselves. And so they use their sharp teeth to cut down trees and branches and put them into um, the dam that they're building for their home. They have this beaver tail too, which is a great tool for helping them swim around when they're building their dam or when they're getting around in the water. The last mammal that I put on here is a human, because remember, humans are mammals too. And the biggest characteristic of a human is our brain. And that is the biggest thing that helps us survive is because we have a brain and it makes us very smart, very intelligent, and our brains can help us survive. It teaches us a lot of things and helps us learn new things and teaches us different ways to survive. All right, so then the last one is bugs and insects. We were going to talk about that this week, but we'll just talk about it for a quick second here. So the first one I picked is a wasp, and a wasp has a characteristic to help it survive. Sometimes we don't like to be around them because what can they do? They can sting, they have stingers. So that is a way to protect themselves. Wasps have a stinger and that helps protect them. Grasshoppers are kind of the same as those frogs where they have really long back legs that help them jump and get away from things. If there was a predator, they'd be able to jump away. That's a good characteristic of a grasshopper is their long legs. Okay, this is a good one, a spider. A spider is not an insect. A spider is called an arachnid. But the spider is able to build this web and that helps them survive. Why do you think a web would help a spider to survive. 
that is how the spider catches their food. So they build their web, and then if some kind of bug flies into their web, well, then they've already caught their meal. So the web helps this spider survive because it helps catch them some food. And then the last one I have is the roly-poly. And this is a great characteristic. They can have this hard shell to help protect them. And also when they feel threatened or they feel like they might be in danger, they roll up into a ball and then they are protected on with their hard shell. So roly-polies have a good characteristic to help them survive. They just roll up into a ball and that helps protect them. All right, so that is just a short, um, chat about bugs and insects and mammals and reptiles and amphibians and all of those other animals and plants that we've learned about in our IB planner. We are going to be moving on to a different IB planner next week. So this is our last lesson talking about plants and animals. So I just wanted to remind you of some of those things that we've learned and help you remember all of the cool things and the cool characteristics that plants and animals have. And uh, we will be learning about something new next week. So I'll see you soon. Bye.